it wasn't an algorithm. You need to understand that first. The images and sounds you were shown, the cryptic numbers that appeared in your recommendations, that was a signal, a tuning fork resonating with something already inside of you. You were chosen because you are one of the few who senses that the reality we see is just a fraction of the whole story. A beautiful, hypnotic, but fragmented echo. For months, you've been collecting those echoes, feeling their power without understanding the source. Consider this video the first translation of that source. This is not another theory or a guess. This is the blueprint, the very architecture of the philosophy you've been subconsciously drawn to. What you are about to see is the key that elevates you from a mere spectator of the mystery to an active participant in its unfolding. The puzzle pieces are in your hands. Now, let's begin to assemble them. Here are certain symmetries that possess no utility. They explain nothing, decorate nothing, and serve no function. Yet, they persist. They manifest like scars on the body of someone who has never known battle, or like dreams that repeat with eerie precision, only to break off halfway through. It is as though the universe, caught in a state of obsessive distraction, keeps bending its own laws around an invisible, crooked axis, insisting on a reflection where none is required. We must distinguish these from canonical symmetries, the kind that lend grandeur to cathedral aisles or structure the elegant equations of particle physics. Those possess an internal grammar, a justification born of beauty. Our concern lies with the others, the anomalies that surface where they should not, emerging from chaos without intention, as if something or someone wanted to play God without taking responsibility for the design. Science offers the term emergent symmetry, though one should not be beguiled by the polish of the definition. Often it is merely a euphemism for, we have no idea why it happens, but isn't it lovely? In complex systems that lack inherent balance, a sudden harmony arises, order generated from disorder, as if the universe grew weary of drifting aimlessly and decided, momentarily, to find a center. Consider the ant colony. Individual workers absorbed in chaotic microtasks suddenly coalesce into a spiral flow, a pattern written nowhere yet enacted by all, as if chaos itself were nostalgic for form. This phenomenon echoes through neural networks, migration paths, and speculative bubbles, or even within your own mind when scattered errors suddenly align into something resembling insight. But this symmetry is only an unkept promise, a mirage with strict rules that vanishes the moment you try to pin it down. And then there's fractality, that eerie cousin of symmetry that pretends to be order but is actually obsession, a repetition across scales, like a voice whispering something is wrong in ever-changing inflections. Take the Sierpinski Triangle, for instance, or the Mandelbrot set, Figures that multiply, fold, creep into space as if trying to fill it all, down to the last bit. A geometric hunger that never ends, an algorithm eating its own tail. These patterns are not designed, but calculated. They are not born, they emerge, much like historical events that recur with slight mutations, suggesting history itself is a fractal seeking convergence. Do you remember Vico, the philosopher of recurrence, of history's cycles and returns? He didn't speak of fractals, but maybe he sensed them, felt that form repeats itself even when it shouldn't, even when it hurts. And Plotinus, earlier still, searched for symmetry in the soul of the world, in the reflection of things that are one but appear many. Or consider Kabbalah, letters mirrored, numbers chasing each other, worlds multiplying within each other like facing mirrors. Why do these senseless symmetries persist? 
perhaps because they're traces of something that doesn't want to be seen. Perhaps they are what remains after meaning, like the creases of a sheet after a dream. Or perhaps we are the ones who seek them everywhere, like someone counting their steps to avoid getting lost. We label this apophenia, the tendency to find narrative in noise, to believe that three scratches on a wall or three recurring words in a text constitute a signal. But what if they are? Maybe the symmetries that make no sense weren't meant for us. Maybe they're the byproduct of a higher computation that includes us only by mistake. As if we were reading a divine formula written in a forgotten language and only understanding the refrains. Or maybe they are indeed messages, not for you and not for me, but for someone else entirely. And I would not rule out the possibility that the universe is a self-correcting system, regenerating itself through purposeless symmetries that explain nothing yet soothe the chaos. Like crop circles, mirrored numbers, or coincidences that feel too heavy to be chance. Like you reading this very line and thinking, so maybe. No, there is no so. There is only maybe. But even maybe sometimes is a fractal. And then, then nothing happens. Keep watching, keep noticing. Keep seeing the symmetries no one asked you to see. They will not help you, but they will stay with you. And isn't that the real mystery? That there are things in this existence which serve no purpose, and yet they never stop existing. See you in the next episode.